a stir-fried dish from the hog. Two plates of stir-fried wild hog in uh, oyster hoisin sauce. Hi, Chef Al here with uh, at Guitar Ranches here in Texas with our Outdoor Solutions from Field to Table event. And we're doing a cooking demonstration out in the meat shed. Uh, and I'm going to basically go over all the key steps of this one cooking method and we just have some ingredients basically out of the kitchen. So the first thing we're going to do is a stir fry dish and we're using the, some of the tender cuts from the hog. So the first number one thing is we want to stir fry a tender cut. And the tender cuts on all those trims are what we're using. We got this little butane burner here, so I got to crank it up as full, as high as possible because uh, we need some high BTU output and that thing really doesn't give us something that we would have in a normal kitchen. So we have some tender cuts and we're just winging this here. So we got some sesame oil. We're going to put some oil in here on, on our our meat. We also have some hot chili oil, so somebody mentioned they like really hot stuff, so we're going to put a little uh, hot oil in here. And then we've got some, we call mise en place, some fresh ginger, and uh, the basic ratio for ginger and garlic and green onions would be one part ginger, two parts garlic, and three parts green onion. So we just got that blended going to use a little bit of uh, some just a little bit of cracked pepper because we want again we want it to be spicy and we're gonna mix this up well because it's a tender cut you really don't need to marinate it as much or as long so we've got this blended real nice now we've got it coated it's seasoned oh look at that that's hot enough how do we know if I touch that it's gonna burn like heck so, but it's smoking, it's ready to go. So the object is to not overload the pan, and the object is to, we're gonna put a little bit of sesame oil in, just in here. Of course, this is one of those non-stick pans. And we're gonna add a small amount of meat. And we're gonna set the fire alarm off in here. And because there's usually a lot of action in a wok, but if I move that too much, I'll cool that down. And if I add too much meat to that, I cool that wok down. We want that caramelization in here. We don't have a lot of uh, uh, BTU, so that's why we're not doing as much action as you normally would. And we're just gonna basically keep this rare. We're just trying to brown it to get some caramelization. If I put too much meat in there, it cools the pan and then the meat sweats. We sweat vegetables, not meat. We don't want the juice to come out of the meat. We want the juice to stay in the meat. So if you see liquid in there and it's starting to boil, you did it wrong. The chef's gonna bop you on the back of the head. So, so. The more I pick this up, the more heat I lose. So that's why I'm not, uh, again, going, going too, too high, too, too fast. And these were a little thick, but we, you know, we could use you know, thinner strips if you wanted to. And of course, this dish, you could use venison or elk or caribou or anything like that. So we got a nice caramelization on there. We got good heat on there. The next most important step is to spread this meat out. So we're going to spread it out on, on the tray and we're just going to add some more back on there. We cook with our senses, so we listen and we're not getting a, a lot of sound off of that. One, because we don't have as much oil, but two, just that little bit of moving there, I lost some heat. So that's why I'm not adding this. The, the, that key step of, uh, we'll add a little more sesame oil to this. You could use peanut oil. You know, if it was an Italian dish in a saute pan, you could use olive oil. So, uh, 
We've got that, and that's going to sear up nice. This important step is we spread that out. We want the heat to dissipate. If you put it in a bowl and it's all together, it holds the heat and then it sweats. And then you lose the juice. You want the meat or the juice in the meat, not in the pan and not in the bowl. You want that heat to dissipate out so the moisture stays in the meat. So otherwise, if we piled that up, we'd have a, a, you know, a container full of full of meat and juices. So again, a standard ratio, we got one part ginger, two parts garlic, three parts green onions. That's pretty simple. You can use all different types of, you can use Szechuan peppers and all of those kinds of things. So the, I would say the most common mistake that happens when we stir fry is we overload the wok. And if you go out to eat where they're cooking with woks, you'll see the wok is like this big and you're cooking like one or two orders. And the object is to cook all the way up and around those sides there. Okay, so we're getting a good brown on this. We're getting a good caramelization. We don't have any liquid in the pan. We're gonna pull this over to the side. I'm gonna lower the heat. And we're just gonna take this now and spread it out. Remember, remember the meat is pretty uh, rare. It's not fully cooked yet. We've got ginger, green onions. We'll add some green onions. You wanted it hot, so we're going to make it hot. We'll just add a little bit more oil, hot chili oil. And I'm going to add some yellow and red pepper for color. <coughs> Excuse me. We didn't have any snow peas, so we're in sugar, sugar snaps. You could use asparagus excuse me, asparagus, broccoli. And we're gonna just cook this up, heat that up, turn it back up full blast. And then we're gonna start adding some sauces. So what we have here is we have a little bit of sherry wine, and I always pour the wine or any alcohol into a cup, not out of the bottle, just for a safety factor, because if you do get some flames, you know, you don't want to be messing with a bottle that's half full or half empty. So, it's going to move this out of the way. Get some of our items prepped. We probably don't need any more pepper. We just give this some more stir. Again, a little bit of nice brown on the meat. We'll move our sherry out of the way. We have some oyster sauce. We have some hoisin sauce. There's so many different sauces that you can buy in the market that complement and make life easy. Of course, you can make your own, but uh, we're just going to use these because we're here in hunting camp and they were available to us out of the kitchen here at the lodge. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add some sherry and just see if we can flame it off. And what I mean by that is I, I'll take the pan over here, pour the sherry over here, and then bring it over here and woo, burn that alcohol off. So it's gone, the alcohol's gone. We're gonna add a little bit of oyster sauce because we want this to be a nice glaze. And you can add honey and you know, you can use oranges and um, orange sauce, sweet and sour sauces. The hoisin sauce, basically a soy based product. And that, that's pretty thick. So we could add uh, more sherry, we could add something else to just thin it down, but we're just gonna use it for a glaze. So I just wanna taste this right now before I put the meat back in there. That's pretty strong. So I'm gonna ask somebody, if you could get me, just, I just wanna thin it out with a little bit of water. Thank you. Just to smooth out that flavor. Uh, or you could use chicken base with chicken broth or any type of stock just to smooth it out. Thank you. So we'll just add a little bit of water to that. Get it to where we want it to be. I didn't double dip, did I? Get that. We're not really hot yet, if the hot's coming around now. 
So this ginger, there's no liquid in there. Now this is gonna go back in. So the ginger and the garlic and the green onions are gonna go marry with that flavor in that sauce, with that oyster sauce. So you could use oyster sauce, poison sauce straight up. You don't have to use, you know, a blend of these. We're just winging it. We're just using whatever we have here in hunting camp at the lodge. It's still got, got some power to it, so I'm just going to thin it out a little bit more. And then we're going to let that cook. So back to the key steps. The first key step was a tender cut of meat. The next key step was a hot wok. But you could do this in a saute pan or a cast iron pan if you were in hunting camp. The next key step was to not overload the pan or the wok. The next key step was to spread it out so it didn't sweat. Then we make our sauce and finish it up. And if we left this meat in this sauce from beginning to end, it would have kept cooking and boiling. And when you overcook that tender cut, you're gonna make it chewy and tough. So that's why we don't leave that in here. So that's why we took the meat out. And again, in a commercial restaurant, that's done totally different because of the size of the, con the container and or the cooking utensil. It does have a bite, it'll creep up on you. If you're doing this with certain types of Szechuan peppers and things, you wanna be careful you don't get your face over the top of that because it'll, it'll take your breath away. So now we are ready to plate up. It tastes good. It's got a nice bite. It's got a nice color. So we're just going to, I'm just going to take the spoon, just put a little bit on the center of the plate. And again, you could do this with turkey breast. You can do this with venison. We're doing it with wild pig. You could serve this, of course, with a little bit of rice. And we got some sesame seeds. So this is basically our stir fry of wild hog or pig or boar in an oyster hoisin sauce. So we want to make sure that we don't have anything on the rim of that plate because that is the server's. Yours is on the inside. So here's um, two plates of stir fried wild pig or hog in uh, oyster uh, hoisin sauce. So that's what it looks like. Uh, it's a real simple appetizer. That's not what we're cooking tonight for, uh, for dinner for all of our guests. But let's just, I gotta taste a piece of this meat before I let anybody else taste a piece of meat. Got a nice little tender piece here. Mmm. That tastes good. Got a good blend, good marry. So come on up. Again, don't double dip it. You can try it. Be careful. It does have a bite. If you don't like spicy foods, uh, you might want to take a very little bit. Or, and or try the vegetables. I'm going to just pass this around. We'll pass the fork or spoon first, and then you can take the plate. We'll pass this on this side. And give it a shot. Take a whip of it. Remember, we cook with our senses, so we're watching it, we're smelling it, we're tasting it, we're listening to the action on it. And uh, again, you gotta be careful because it does have a bite, it'll creep up on you from that hot chili sauce that follows it. What do you think? It's delicious, it's not Did spicy at all, really. I mean, it's not, it's not tremendous heat. Oh, for him, it's right. not spicy. Mm. Yeah, for Jay last night, he would've, he would've uh, had to spit it out. It was, because for him, that's real spicy. But, uh, you know, it's really simple. And this thing was running around a couple days in the backyard here. And uh, that's just a simple appetizer that we use with the scraps. So come eat with us at fieldtotable.com.